In this series of videos, we will be building a small game. The techniques you will learn in this tutorial are fundamental to building any React app, and mastering it will give you a solid understanding of React. This video series is designed for people who prefer to learn by doing, and is based on the official React tutorial at reactjs.org. Our game will be a tic-tac-toe game. We will now demo the game that we will build during this video series. The tic-tac-toe game consists of a board of three rows and three columns of squares. Two players take turns clicking on the board. The player who starts marks an X on the board and becomes player X, and the next player becomes player O. The first player to get a row, column, or diagonal line of three X's or O's wins the game. For example, player X starts in the top left square. Player O follows with a move in the square below. Player X's second move is in the top right square. Player O's second move is in the top middle square. Player X then clicks on the bottom left square. Player O blocks with a move in the centre square. Player X follows with a move in the bottom middle square. And player O wins with a move in the right central square. We have now demonstrated how our game works. We will now get started with setting up a simple React app. Please use your command line interface to do so. First, check that you have a recent version of Node installed so that you can use the npx command. We will be using the Create React App package to set up a React app. We will call the app Tic Tac Toe. Running this command may take a minute or so. Change directory into the Tic Tac Toe folder created by the previous command. To run the app, type yarn start or npm start if that is your preferred task runner. The app will open in your default browser at localhost 3000. Also, open the current folder in your preferred code editor. We will be using Atom. We have completed the setup, and we have our code editor Atom on the left of our screen. And we have a Chrome browser window on the right of our screen. We have opened the index.js file in the source folder of our project. For our course, we will start from scratch, so delete all the code from this file. We will also be using the index.css file during this course, so open it up as well. Delete all the code from this file. Switch back to index.js. We will hide the project tree view on the left. We are now ready to get started. In this video, we will make our first React component and render it to the DOM. In the index.js file, we will create a function called game. You can see that this function returns something that looks like HTML. However, it is neither HTML nor is it a string. It is JSX. JSX is a syntax extension to JavaScript. JSX stands for JavaScript XML. During Create React App's build process, JSX compiles to pure JavaScript. React does not require using JSX, but it is recommended because it looks similar to HTML and is easy for developers to read and write. Save the file. In the browser, you will see Fail to Compile. React must be in scope when using JSX. So let's import React at the top of our file. Save the file. 
we can see that the app compiles. However, we still see a blank screen. The game function is a React component. We need to render the game component to the DOM. In order to do that, we first need to import the React DOM package. Now that we've imported the React DOM library, we can use its render method. The render method takes two arguments, the first being the component to render to the DOM, and the second being the node in the DOM to render the component to. We will refer to this DOM node as the target node or the target container. Let's go to the bottom of the file. The first argument is the game component using JSX notation. The second argument is the target node. In Create React App, the target node is a div with an ID of root. We will access this target node using JavaScript's document.getElementById method. Save the file and see the component render on our page. Well done, you've now rendered your first React component. Let's go to the index.css file to add some styling to the body of our page. Save the changes. Let's switch back to the index.js file. Under the third party package imports, we will import the CSS file that we edited. Save the file and see the body styling update in the browser. Let's go back to index.css to add some more styling. We will add some margin to the body. Save the change and see the browser update. Finally, let's make the font size bigger and use a different font family. Save your changes. Let's add two more components to our app, a board component and a square component. The game component will contain the board component, and in turn, the board component will contain the square component. Each component is a building block in our app. Since we will be adding two new components, we will use inline styles to more clearly differentiate the components from each other. In JavaScript, we can create an object containing the styles that we want to add to a component. For example, we want to change the background color and add some margin and padding to our game component. Note that we camel case and remove hyphens from attribute names in JavaScript, as we have done with background color, and wrap values that are strings in quotes, like the color value salmon. We can omit the pixel unit for margin and padding, as it is the default. Add the game styles object to our game component. This is done by first adding a style property to the JSX div tag. The style property is followed directly by an equals sign in JSX. The equals sign is then followed directly by a pair of curly braces. We can refer to these curly braces after a property as a JSX container. Inside the JSX container, we can put any valid JavaScript expression. Finally, put the game styles variable inside the JSX container. Save your changes to see the browser update. 
instead of putting the game styles variable inside the JSX container, we can put in the entire game styles object, so we don't need a separate variable declaration. Save the file to see that this has the same effect. We can now delete the game styles declaration. Next, add a board component above the game component. Add some inline styles to the board. Now, render the board component within the game component. We have composed the board component within the game component. We can also say that the board component is a child of the game component. Next, add a square component above the board component. Add some inline styles to the square component. Now, render the square component within the board component. Save and view the outcome in the browser. We can clearly see our three components and the hierarchical relationship among them. Instead of using inline styles, we will switch to using CSS. First, remove the inline styles from the game component. Add a prop called class name. The class name prop is the JavaScript equivalent of the CSS class attribute. Usually, we follow the prop and equals sign with a JSX container. However, if the value passed to the prop is just a string, we can add it within quotes. We will pass the string value game to the class name prop. Save the file and then move to index.css. Add styles for the game class in CSS. We will use Flexbox styling. We will arrange the layout in a column. And we will align the layout in the center. Save and view the effect in the browser. Move back to index.js. Now we want to render nine tic-tac-toe squares inside our board component. First, add two additional squares to our board. Save and view the effect in the browser. We want to put these three squares in a row instead of being under each other. We will use a Flexbox CSS layout to do this. First, wrap the three squares in a div tag with a class name of board row. Save the file. Now add the CSS for the board row class in the index.css file. We will create a board row class. Make it a flexbox container, arranging its items in a non wrapping row. Save and view the effect in the browser. 
three squares are now in a row. Now move back to the index.js file. Add two additional rows of three squares in the board component by duplicating the first row twice. Save and view the effect in the browser. Now add some additional styling to the square component. Select the text square and delete it. Put an X there instead to mark a cross in tic-tac-toe, then save the file. Remove the inline styles. Add the prop class name and pass it the text value square. Save the file. Now add the square class CSS styles in the index.css file. Make the background color dark gray and the text color white. Add a lighter gray border and make the padding zero. Make the font size 84 pixels large and align the text to the center. Finally, make the width and height 100 pixels large. Save and view the results in the browser. It is starting to look like a proper tic-tac-toe board. First, let's refactor the board component. We will create a function to render each square so that we can add more functionality later. We will call the function render square and it will return a square component. Now we will substitute all the square tags in the return expression using function calls to render square within JSX containers instead. Save the changes and verify that there is no visual difference in the browser after this refactoring. In React, we pass data from a parent component to a child component. The data flows in one direction only in React. This makes it easier for us to keep track of the flow of data and also easier to identify bugs in our code. The mechanism in React for passing data from parent to child is called props short for properties. For example, to pass a string from the parent board component to the child square component so that the square can display it, we add a single prop to the returned square component. Let's add a prop that we will call value to the square. We follow the value prop with an equal sign. Then we pass in the data that we want to flow down to the square. We can add a JSX container and add a JavaScript expression, or if it's just a string literal, we can wrap it in quotation marks. Let's pass a capital O string literal as an example. Now that we've added a prop called value to the return square tag, React gives us access to it via an object called props in the square component as the function input argument. Our pass down value prop is simply a property within this props object. We can display its value instead of the capital X. Save the file and view the results in the browser. We have successfully passed props from the board component to all its square child components. Now let's set an index value on each rendered square so that we can differentiate them and reference them individually. We will call the index lowercase i. We will make the index an input argument of the render square function. 
Now pass this index to the square as its value prop. The index must be passed in within a JSX container because it is not a string literal. Now we can call each render square function with a different index value for each of the nine squares on the tic-tac-toe board, starting from index 0 for the top left square, going to index 8 for the bottom right square. After saving your changes, you can see each square display its own index value in the browser. Handling events with React elements is very similar to handling events on DOM elements. For example, we will show you how to handle a click event on a button element in React. First, we will convert our square's div element into a button. We will make some space in our button tag. The button can respond to the user clicking on it by using an onClick event handler. The onClick handler takes a JSX container. Within the JSX container, a function definition is passed. When the user clicks on the button with a function definition passed to its onClick handler, the function is called. For example, we will pass an anonymous function, which alerts the user which square was clicked on by the user. Save the file. We will add some additional CSS styles to the button when it is clicked. Go to index.css. Set the outline to none and set a darker background color. Save the file. We will now check if the squares respond to clicks directly in the browser. Click on the square with index 2. As desired, we get an alert saying square 2 clicked. As a next step for our tic-tac-toe game, we want the square component to remember that it was clicked and fill it with an X or an O mark. If a square has not yet been clicked, it is empty and it should have a value of null. To remember things, React components use a mechanism called state. Unlike props, which is data that comes from a parent component, state is data that originates from the component itself. This is why it is also referred to as local state. In React, we can use a feature called the useState hook in order to create and remember state. Let's add this feature in our code. We are in the index.js file. The useState hook is a named import in React, so let's import it at the top of our file. We will have the square component create and remember its own value as state. So we no longer need to pass down the value from the parent board component to the square component. We will delete the value prop. Save the file. We are no longer making use of the index i, so the value obtained via props in the square component is now undefined. Each square on the tic-tac-toe board no longer shows the index. We will use the useState hook in order to define the value as state in the square component itself. We want each square to remember if it has an X or an O when a player clicks on it, or a null value if no player has clicked on it. The useState hook is a function 
which we will call at the top of the square component. It takes the initial value of the state as an argument. In our case, we want the initial value to be null. This function returns an array with two values. We use the first value to get the state, and the second value to set the state. In our example, we will simply call the state getter value and the state setter set value. Note that the state setter set value is a function which takes the value that the state should be set to as its argument. Now we'll change the square's return expression to display the current state variable's value when clicked. First, let's remove the reference to props inside our button since we are using the value state, not props. Second, we will set the state variable value when the user clicks on the square, and for the time being, we'll set it to x. We can do this by updating the button on click handler to make use of the setter function. Save the file. By calling set value x from the on click handler in the squares button, we are telling React to re render the square whenever the button is clicked. After the user clicks on a square, the square's state value will be x, so we'll see the x on the game board for that square. Let's click on the square with index 2. We now have successfully implemented setting the square's state value to x when clicked by the user. We already have the basic building blocks for our tic-tac-toe game. To have a complete game, we now need to alternate placing X's and O's on the board. And we need a way to determine a winner. Currently, each square component maintains its own state. To check for a winner, we'll need to maintain the value of each of the nine squares in one location. We can accomplish this by storing this data as state in the parent board component instead of in each square. The board component can then tell each square what to display by passing a prop with the value, just like we did when we passed an index number to each square. Inside the board component, we will keep a record of the state of all nine squares as an array of elements which are either x or o or null. We will call this state array variable squares and use the useState hook to manage it. We will call the initial value of the square's state simply initial squares, which we will define shortly. The useState function returns an array of two values. We have already decided to call the state variable squares, and we will call the state setter set squares. Now let's define initial squares. It is an array of nine values, representing the values in each of the nine tic-tac-toe squares. The game starts out with a blank board, so each of the nine values of the array should be null initially. That's the initial squares state. When the players start clicking on squares, then the square's array values will change from null to either x or o. The board component thus remembers all the square's values using the square's array. The value of each square will be passed down from the board via props. The value prop will be passed the value of the square's state array at its index. In our square component, we no longer need local state for the value, since it is now being passed down from the board via props. Let's delete the useState hook. Now let's show the value as a property of the passed down props object. Also, the setValueSetter in the onClickHandler is no longer applicable, 
so we'll have the handler do nothing for the time being. Save the file. We have moved the game state from the square component to the parent board component. In React, we refer to this as lifting state up. We need to be able to change the displayed value to either an X or an O when a square is clicked. The board component currently maintains the value in each square in the square's state array. We need to create a way for the square component to update the parent board component state. Since state is considered to be local and private to the component that defines it, we cannot update the board component state directly from the square component. In React, we deal with this by passing a function down from the board component to the child square component, which the square component calls when a square is clicked, which in turn causes the board component state to update. We thus indirectly update the board state from the square component. Let's define the function that will be passed down. We will call it handle click event. It will take the index i as an argument. For the time being, we will simply have the function show an alert when it is called. Next, we have to pass this function down to the square component. Let's first make some space to do so. We will call the prop the function is passed to on click event. We will pass the handle click event function invoked with index i within an anonymous function since we want it to be called only when a square is clicked. Now we can move into the button on click handler in the child square component. Pass the on click event prop in as its handler. Now, the handle click event handler at the index of the square will be called when the button is clicked. Let's test this out in the browser. First, save the file. Let's click on the square with index 2. You can see in the browser that an alert appears, showing that square 2 was clicked. As a next step, when we click on a square, we want to show an X. In the handle click event function, you may be tempted to do this by simply setting the value at index i in the squares array to be X. However, this does not work. Save the file and click on a square in the browser. As you can see, nothing happens. In React, we cannot directly mutate the state. For React to register that the state variable has changed, which causes it to re-render the UI, we must create an updated copy of the state, and then use the setter function to update the state variable. We will break this procedure into three steps. But before that, let's delete the incorrect direct state mutation. We will comment our steps first. Step 1. Make a copy of the square state array. Step 2. Mutate the copy, setting its ith element to x. Step 3. Call the set squares function with the mutated copy. This is how we update the state in React using what is called the immutable approach. Let's implement these steps now. 
For step one, make a copy of the squares array using array spread syntax and assign the copy to a variable we will call new squares. For step two, mutate the copy, setting the clicked element to X. For step three, use the state setter function set squares to set our state to the modified copy. Save the file. Now try it out in the browser by clicking the square with index two. The clicked square now shows an X so the immutable approach to updating state works. Let's delete our comments. Before we move on to the next video, we will show you a simpler way of creating the initial squares array with nine null values. We start by using the array constructor, passing in the length as its argument. We will pass nine as the argument. This will create an array with nine empty slots. Then we will use the array fill method, which will fill all the empty slots with the value passed as an argument. We will pass null as the argument. This gives us an array of nine nulls. We can now delete the initial squares declaration above. After showing player X move, we want to show player O move on our board. To do so, we will create a state variable called x is next in our board component to show when player x is next in turn. We will call this state setter function set x is next. x is next takes a boolean value. We will set the first move to be x by default, so the initial value of x is next is true. Each time a player moves, the boolean x is next will be flipped to determine which player goes next. Let's implement this in the click event handler. After the square state has been updated, we can flip the boolean value for x is next. We can now take turns, save the file and try it out in the browser. The first player moves, clicking on the square with index zero. An X shows. Now the second player moves, clicking on the square with index four. An O shows. Now the first player makes the third move, clicking on the square with index two. An X shows. Taking turns works as we wanted. Let's also add some status text in the board that displays which player has the next turn. Let's add the status text to the return JSX instead of showing the static text board. Save the file, and then you will see the status text in the browser. We will now make some minor styling improvements. We will remove the inline styles in the outermost div of the board. Add a class name of status to the div wrapping the status text. Inside the game component, instead of showing game as the heading, Change it to tic-tac-toe. Switch to the index.css file. Add the status class. Set the margin to 20 pixels and set the font size to 24 pixels. Save the file.
we need to show when the game has been won. We will create a helper function to calculate which player is the winner. At the end of the file, let's create this function. It will take the squares array as its argument. This function will return either x or o if there is a winner, or null if there is no winner. A player wins if they have a line of x's or o's. These winning lines can be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. We will put our winning combinations in an array called lines. First, let's list the horizontal winning combinations within arrays of indices. Now, the vertical winning combinations. Finally, the diagonal combinations. We will loop over the lines array to see if our squares array contains any of these winning combinations. We will use destructuring assignment syntax on the line to unpack the three indices within it. We will first check if the value at the first index A is not null. And if the value at index A is the same as the value at index B. And if the value at index A is also the same as the value at index C. Then we have a winner. We can return the value of squares at the index A to show that either X or O is the winner. Otherwise, there is no winner, and we return null. Now, call the calculate winner function in the board component to check if a player has won. Update the status depending on whether there is a winner or not. If there is a winner, that is, if the winner is not null, then show the winner in the status. Otherwise, show the next player to move, as before. Save the file. Let's test it in the browser. Click on index 0 first. The game correctly shows that the next player is O. Click for player O on index 1. Click for player X on index 4 in the center. Click for player O on index 2. Finally, Click for player X on index 8, bottom right square. The game correctly shows the winner is player X. Our game can already be played, but there are still a couple of issues we need to deal with. Let's look at a game that has already been won, as we have showing in the browser at the moment. A player can still click on an empty square. For example, click on the square with index 6, bottom left corner. As you can see, an O appears, which it shouldn't. Also, a player can click on a square that already has an X or O. For example, click on the square with index 2. The O on the square changed to an X. This is something we also want to avoid. Let's fix these two issues. 
in the click handler in our board component, we can check if the game has been won or if the square is filled. And if either of these is true, we can jump out of the handler before updating the state. This is called returning early from a function. To find out if a player has already won, we can use the calculate winner helper function. This function will return x or o if there is a winner, or null if there isn't. We can explicitly cast it to a boolean and assign the result to a variable for better readability. Now, let's find out if a square is filled or not. Perform the check for whether either of these two conditions hold. If either of these is true, then we should return early. If we return early, the state is not updated within this handler, and it does nothing. Save the file and test the game out in the browser. Let's get the game into a state where player X has won. First, let's test if we can make another move now that a player has already won. Click on the square with index 6, bottom left corner. Nothing happens, as desired. Now click on the square with index 2. As we wanted, it has no effect. Congratulations! You now have a working tic-tac-toe game.